Hello everyone and welcome back to another makeup tutorial where I remind you that I am not a professional but I am trying my best. Today we're doing something very different and I'm turning myself into this drawing which is of an NPC from my D&D campaign Ravenwood which if you haven't watched it very conveniently there is a link to the playlist in the description below. This video is inspired by and sponsored by Black Paper Moon by Vindicated Entertainment which is a tabletop role-playing game. To learn a bit more about it stay tuned to the end of the video. For those of you who swear by only using body paint uh, for cosplays like this, um, you might want to look away because for this entire video I am going to be using eyeshadow to make myself pink. Listen, I warned you I am not a professional, I am just doing this with what I have and what I can tolerate. And every time I've used body paint in the past I have had a massive breakdown. <laughs> so we're going into this with simply eyeshadow and a brush and we're just gonna go crazy. I should note that I also feel like this is a good way to show that this kind of cosplay is accessible to those of you who don't have body paint or don't want to buy body paint or can't buy body paint. If you have some eyeshadow that's in the color of the color you need, then you know what? Just go crazy. Do what I'm doing. We might look unhinged, but it works. It works. Also, if you hear some click clacking in the background, it's Sherlock, my dog. He is chewing on a bone and he is enjoying himself, so I'm not going to stop him. Please also note that I did go into this with foundation and concealer already on my skin, as well as powder. I did powder my face to make sure that none of this eyeshadow just goes directly into my pores. I'm going in now with a darker shade of the shade I was using. It's a little bit of a purple, and I'm going to use this to basically contour my face the way that I typically would contour my face, except of course I'm using purple. <laughs> I typically try to cover the sides of my nose and the corners of my brows, as well as my temples and my cheeks and underneath my jaw. I'm now using a light shade of pink in my wired palette to go on top of my eyes and beneath my eyes to try and kind of cover my eye bags and brighten them a little bit more and also blend them more into my skin color. I look absolutely insane, but it's fine. Um, I am now using a dark purple to start on the eyeshadow look. Um, my character kind of has some darker eyes. She is a little bit dark, a little mysterious. That's why we're going with the darker purple. The reason I'm using my finger is I just feel like it's coming out a lot more pigmented that way. I did try using the brush before this and it just did not come out bright enough. When you're trying to put eyeshadow over eyeshadow over eyeshadow, it is pretty difficult, so therefore I recommend using your finger. I'm also doing the same thing with a black, but I'm going beneath my eye and kind of working my way up to the corners of my eyes to kind of darken the look a little bit more. I'm now going in with a few different hues of pink from my Metamorphosis palette. I'm hoping to try and kind of brighten up the eye look a little bit more by putting a lighter pink on top of my eye as well as an iridescent whitish pink in the corners of my eyes. I'm using the same iridescent white to go along the top of my nose as a sort of highlighter, as well as the top of my lip, which is one of my favorite things to do whenever I'm doing makeup looks. And now it's time for her markings, which you can skip past this if you have no interest in this, but for some reason I made it that she has these really cool elvish markings on her, and so now I'm attempting to recreate that with more eyeshadow. So. If you're interested, I'm using a darker purple and a small, thinner brush to try and draw on these shapes. Aggressive look of concentration.
And this is me actively thinking, okay, maybe I should trust the process. At this point, I also decided that I wanted my eyes to stand out a little bit more, so I put another brighter pink on top of them. And here's me choosing a very random time to put my wig cap on when I definitely could have put it on earlier, but you know what, we're not gonna question it. I'm now using my eyebrow brush and a black eyeshadow to fill in my brows black. Because my NPC Indra has brown freckles and freckles in general, I'm going in with a brown eyeliner from ColourPop to try and just kind of dot my face in the most natural way that I can. Boom, bang, outfit change. Don't worry about it. Jazz helped me into a corset and I also jump scared her with my pink face. But it's not a problem. Anyways, back to business. Here I am dotting my face with another eyeliner. It is a white eyeliner from NYX or NYX. I'm not exactly sure how that is said. But I'm just doing the same thing I did with the brown eyeliner, trying to dot my face in the most natural way that I can. And of course, the part that everyone dreads most, eyeliner, which is very nerve wracking uh, when you have painted your entire face a color and you really don't want to mess it up. <laughs> My biggest tip with eyeliner is just definitely keeping your eye open. There was a time in the past when I thought closing your eye was the easiest way to do it and I assure you that it is not. Following your eye shape is the way that I go about it, but please be patient with yourself. Eyeliner is so difficult. Everyone's eye shape is different. You got this. Go forth and conquer. One fun thing I like to do when I'm not feeling like putting any bottom lashes on or top lashes, I will just kind of draw little lashes underneath my eyeliner. It just feels really feminine and pretty and I like doing it. Next you have mascara, which is a given but I used to hate putting on mascara for any cosplays ever, and I don't know how I did it because it makes such a huge difference in blending all of the colors together, and especially your eyeliner with your waterline and your eyes in general. Next, I'm going in with this NYX Butter Gloss. I didn't end up going with it, it was too thin and not pigmented enough for the look for me, but I did want to share it in case it's something you guys are looking for. And finally, I am adding my elf ears and painting them basically with eyeshadow to give them the color I want. And now, of course, you get to see me fumble with a wig for a few seconds. Indra does not have any braids, so I went ahead and undid them, but it ended up giving me an amazing result. The wig had these two front pieces in the front that made her look so animated, and that's exactly what I was going for. The two back braids that I did not undo, I actually used to wrap around the antlers to try and hide the headband a bit more.
And here is the final result with the darker lipstick as well that I preferred so much more. I have never cosplayed to something that I've drawn before, so this was definitely a new experience, but a fun one nonetheless. And as promised, a little bit more about Black Paper Moon before you go. Black Paper Moon is a rules light tabletop RPG where dark themes mix with mystical powers and whimsy. Its gameplay involves a die tower and using your character's signature powers to navigate both narrative and combative situations. Everything you could ever need is already included in the box as well as a sample adventure for you and your friends to go on. I've been so excited to share this game with you as I am such a huge player of Dungeons and & Dragons and because we do so much roleplay on this channel as is, Vindicated Entertainment also made the Monster Dating Game which is one of my favorite videos that I've ever posted to this channel. If you're interested in checking out this game and other games like it, there's a link in the description below. If you want to support some independent game creators, this is how to do it.